<clears throat> okay, good morning. So we are going to carry on with our story of the Twix. We might even get this finished today. And I've just mentioned before we start, I was thinking we might get this finished today. So I've picked out some new books. I went, still went for Roald Dahl. So this is um, The Magic Finger. And this is George's Marvelous Medicine. So I want you guys to decide um, which story you want to read. So if you want to email year4 at hovingham.org. So year4 at hovingham.org and vote for whether you want to read The Magic Finger or George's Marvelous Medicine. And whichever one you want to read, we will um, we will read. Maybe starting tomorrow. We'll see how we get on with this one today. Maybe we have two more days on this one. Anyway, so quick recap. So um, we were at the point when the roly poly bird had come. The African roly poly bird had come and had scared all the monk all the birds away from landing on the dead tree because Mr. Twit was trying to catch them to to put them in his bird pie and then Mr. and then the roly poly bird sorry then Mr. Twit had put glue hug tight glue on the cage and so the roly poly bird had come and said don't land on the cage so the next chapter is called Mr. and Mrs. Twit go off to buy guns oh dear the next morning, when Mr. Twit came out with his huge basket, not a single bird was sitting on either the monkey cage or the big dead tree. They were all perched happily on the roof of Mr. Twit's house. The roly-poly bird was up there as well, and the monkeys were in the cage, and the whole lot of them were hooting with laughter at Mr. Twit. I'll wipe that silly laugh off your beaks, Mr. Twit screamed at the birds. I'll get you next time, you filthy feathery frumps. I'll wring your necks, the whole lot of you, and have you bubbling in, a, in the pot for bird pie before this day is out. A picture of all the birds on Mr. Twit's house. How are you going to do that? asked Mrs. Twit, who had come outside to see what all the noise was about. I won't have you smearing sticky glue all over our house. Mr. Twit got very excited. I've got a great idea, he cried. He didn't bother to keep his voice down because he didn't think the monkeys could understand. We'll both go into town right away and we'll buy a gun each, he shouted. How's that? Brilliant, cried Mrs. Twit, grinning and showing her yellow, yellow long teeth. We'll buy those big shotguns that spray out 50 bullets or more with each bang. Exactly, said Mr. Twit. Lock up the house while I go and make sure the monkeys are safely shut away. Mr. Twit went over to the monkey cage. Attention, he barked in his fearsome monkey trainer's voice. Upside down, all of you, and jump to it, one on top of the other. Quick, get on with it, or you'll feel Mrs. Twit's stick across your backsides. Obediently, the poor monkeys stood on their hands and clambered one on top of the other, with Muggle Wump at the bottom and the smallest child at the very top. Now stay there till we come back, Mr. Twit ordered. Don't you dare to move, and don't overbalance. When we return in two or three hours time, I shall expect to find you all in exactly the same position as you are now. You understand? With that, Mr. Twit marched away. Mrs. Twit went with him and the monkeys were left alone with the birds. Next chapter, Mugglewump has an idea. As soon as Mr. and Mrs. Twit had disappeared down the road, the monkeys all flipped back onto their feet the right way up. Quick, get the key. Mugglewump called out to the roly-poly bird, who was still sitting on the roof of the house. What key? shouted the roly-poly bird. The key to the door of our cage, cried Mugglewump. It's hanging on the nail in the work shed. That's where he always puts it. The roly-poly bird flew down and came back with the key in his beak. Mugglewump reached a hand through the bars of the cage and took the key. He put it in the lock and turned it. The door opened. All four monkeys leapt out together. We're free, cried the two little ones. Where shall we go, Dad? Where shall we hide? Don't get excited, said Mother One. Calm down, everybody. Before we escape from this beastly place, we have one very important thing to do. What? they asked him. 
we're going to turn those terrible twits upside down. We're going to do what? They cried. You must be joking, Dad. I'm not joking, Mother, Mother Wump said. We're going to turn both Mr. and Mrs. Twit upside down with their legs in the air. Don't be ridiculous, the roly roly poly bird said. How can we possibly turn those two maggoty old monsters upside down? We can, we can, cried, cried Muggle Wump. We're going to make them stand on their heads for hours and hours, perhaps forever. Let them see what it feels like for a change. But how, said the roly poly bird, just tell me how. Muggle Wump laid his head on one side and a twin tiny twinkling little smile touched the corners of his mouth. Now and again, he said, but not very often, I have a brilliant idea. This is one of them. Follow me, my friends, follow me. He scampered off towards the house and the three other monkeys and the roly poly bird went after him. Buckets and paintbrushes, cried Mother Wump. That's what we want next. There are plenty in the workshed. Hurry up. Everyone, get a bucket and a paintbrush. Inside Mr. Twit's workshed, there was an enormous barrel of hug-tight sticky glue. The stuff he used for catching birds. Fill your buckets, Muggle Wump ordered. We are now going into the big house. Mrs. Twit had hidden the key to the front door under the mat, and Muggle Wump had seen her doing it, so it was easy for them to get in. In they went, all four monkeys, with their buckets of sticky glue. Then came the roly-poly bird, flying in after them with a bucket in his beak and a brush in his claw. The next chapter is called The Great Blue Painting Begins. This is the living room, announced Mother Wump. The grand and glorious living room where those two fearful, frumptious freaks eat bird pie every week for supper. Please don't mention bird pie again, said the roly-poly bird. It gives me the shudders. We mustn't waste time, cried Mother Wump. Hurry up, hurry up. The first thing is, I want everyone to paint sticky glue all over the ceiling. Cover it all. Smear it in every corner. Over the ceiling? They cried. Why the ceiling? Never mind why, shouted Muggle Wump. Just do as you're told and don't argue. But how do we get up there? They asked. We can't reach. Monkeys can reach anywhere, shouted Muggle Wump. He was in a frenzy of excitement now waving his paintbrush and his bucket and leaping about all over the room. Come on, come on, jump on the table, stand on the chairs, hop on each other's shoulders. Roly-poly can do it flying. Don't stand there gaping. We have to hurry. Don't you understand that? Those terrible twits will be back any moment, and this time they'll have guns. Get on with it, for heaven's sake. Get on with it. And so the great glue painting of the ceiling began. All the other birds who had been sitting on the roof flew in to help, carrying paintbrushes in their claws and beaks. There were buzzards, magpies, rooks, ravens and many more. Everyone was splashing away like mad and with so many helpers, the job was soon finished. And here's a really good picture. All the birds painting the roof. <laughs> Monkeys sort of put the chair up here to get up there. Cool. Next chapter is called The Carpet Goes on the Ceiling. Have you figured out what they're going to do yet? What now? They all said, looking at Muggle Wump. Aha! cried Muggle Wump. Now for the fun. Now for the greatest upside down trick of all time. Are you ready? We're ready, said the monkeys. We're ready, said the birds. Pull out the carpet, shouted Muggle Wump. Pull this huge carpet out from under the furniture and stick it to the ceiling. Onto the ceiling, cried one of the small birds. But, Dad, that's impossible. I'll stick you to the ceiling if you don't shut up, snapped Muggle Wump. He's dotty, they cried. He's barmy, he's batty, he's nutty, he's screwy, he's wacky, cried the roly-poly bird. Poor old Muggles has got off his wump at last. Oh, do stop shouting such rubbish and give me a hand, said Muggle Wump, catching hold of one corner of the carpet. Pull, you nitwits, pull. The carpet was enormous. In the picture of them getting the carpet. It covered the entire floor from wall, wall to wall. It had a red and gold pattern on it. It is not as easy to pull an enormous carpet off the floor. Oh, I'm sorry. It is not easy to pull an enormous carpet off the floor when the room is full of tables and chairs. Pull! He yelled. 
Paul, Paul, Paul. He was like a demon hopping around the room and telling everyone what to do. But you couldn't blame him. After months and months of standing on his head with his family, he couldn't wait for the time when the terrible twits would be doing the same thing. At least that's what he hoped. With the monkeys and the birds all pulling and puffing, the carpet was dragged off the floor and finally hoisted up onto the ceiling. And there it stuck. All at once, the whole ceiling of the living room was carpeted in red and gold. There's another picture of them pulling it up. Next, the furniture goes up. Now the table, the big table, shouted Mother Wolf. Turn the table upside down and put a dollop of sticky glue on the bottom of each leg. Then we shall stick that onto the ceiling as well. Hoisting the huge table upside down onto the ceiling was not an easy job, but they managed it in the end. Will it stay there? They cried. Is the glue strong enough to hold it? It's the strongest glue in the world, said, said Mother Wump. It's the special bird catching, bird killing glue for smearing on trees. Please, said the roly poly bird. I have asked you before not to mention that subject. How would you like it if it was monkey pie? They made every Wednesday and all your friends had been boiled up and I went on talking about it. I do beg your pardon, said Mother Wump. I'm so excited, I hardly know what I'm saying. Now the chairs. Do the same with the chairs. All the chairs must be stuck upside down to the ceiling. Oh, do hurry up, everybody. Any moment now, those two filthy freaks are going to come rushing in with their guns. The monkeys, with the birds helping them, put the glue on the bottom of each chair leg and hoisted them up to the ceiling. Now the smaller tables, shouted Mother Wump, and the big sofa, and the sideboard, and the lamps, and all the tiny little things. The ashtrays, the ornament, and that beastly plastic gnome on the sideboard. Everything, absolutely everything, must be stuck to the ceiling. It was terribly hard work. It was especially difficult trying to stick everything onto the ceiling in exactly its right place. But they got it done in the end. What now? asked the roly poly bird. He was out of breath and so tired he could hardly flap his wings. Now the pictures, cried Mother Wump. Turn all the pictures upside down. And will one of you birds please fly out onto the road and watch to see when those frumptious freaks are coming back? I'll go, said the roly-poly bird. I'll sit on the telephone wires and keep guard and it'll give me a rest as well. The ravens swoop over. They had only just finished the job when the roly-poly bird came swooping in, screaming, they're coming back, they're coming back. Quickly, the birds flew back onto the roof of the house. The monkeys rushed into their cage and stood upside down, one on top of the other. A moment later, Mr. and Mrs. Twit came marching into the garden, each carrying a fearsome-looking gun. I'm glad to see those monkeys are still upside down, said Mr. Twit. They're too stupid to do anything else, said Mrs. Twit. Hey, look, look at all those cheeky birds still up there on the roof. Let's go inside and load our lovely new guns. And then it'll be bang, 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 bird pie for supper. Just as Mrs. D Mr. and Mrs. Twit were about to enter the house, two black ravens swooped low over their heads. Each bird carried a paintbrush in its claw, and each paintbrush was smeared with sticky glue. As the ravens whizzed over, they brushed a streak of sticky glue on the tops of Mr. and Mrs. Twit's heads. They did it with the lightest touch, but even so, the Twits both felt it. What was that? cried Mrs. Twit. Some beastly bird has dropped his dirty droppings on my head. On mine too, shouted Mrs. Twit. I felt it. I felt it. Don't touch it, cried Mrs. Twit. You'll get it all over your hands. Come inside and we'll wash it off at the sink. The filthy, dirty brutes, yelled Mr. Twit. I'll bet they did it on purpose. Just wait till I've loaded up my gun. Mrs. Twit got the key from under the doormat, where Mother Wump had carefully put it back, and into the house they went. Next chapter. The twits are turned upside down. What's this? gasped Mr. Twit as they entered the living room. What's happened? screamed Mrs. Twit. They stood in the middle of the room, looking up. All the furniture, the big table, the chairs, the sofa, the lamps, the little bed bedside, the little side table, the cabinet with bottles of beer in it, the ornaments, the electric fire, the carpet, 
everything was stuck upside down to the ceiling. The pictures were upside down on the walls and the floor they were standing on was absolutely bare. There's a picture of them looking up and everything stuck to the ceiling. <laughs> Great. What's more, it had been painting, painted white to look the floor. They're standing on the floor and it's completely bare. What's more, it had been painted white to look like the ceiling. Look, screamed Mrs. Twit. That's the floor. The floor's up there. This is the ceiling. We're standing on the ceiling. Wait, we're upside down, gasped Mr. Twit. We must be upside down. We're standing on the ceiling, looking up, looking down at the floor. Oh, help, screamed Mrs. Twit. Help, help, help. I'm beginning to feel giddy. So am I. So am I, cried Mr. Twit. I don't like this one little bit. We're upside down and all the blood's going to my head, screamed Mrs. Twit. If we don't do something quickly, I shall die. I know I will. I've got it, cried Mr. Twit. I know what we'll do. We'll stand on our heads. Then anyway, we'll be the right way up. So they stood on their heads. And of course, the moment the tops of their heads touched the floor, the sticky glue that the ravens had brushed on a few moments before did its job. They were stuck. They were pinned down, cemented, glued, fixed to the floorboards. Through a crack in the door, the monkeys watched. They jumped right out of their cage the moment the twit had gone inside, and the roly-poly bird watched, and all the other birds flew in and out to catch a glimpse of this extraordinary sight. <laughs> Next chapter, The Monkey's Escape. That evening, Mugglewump and his family went up to the big wood on the top of the hill, and in the tallest tree of all, they built a marvellous tree house. All the birds, especially the big ones, the crows and the rooks and the magpies, made their nests around the tree house so that nobody could see it from the ground. You can't stay up here forever, you know, the roly poly bird said. Why not? asked Muggle, Muggle Wump. It's a lovely place. Just you wait till the winter comes, the roly poly bird said. Monkeys don't like cold weather, do they? They most certainly don't, cried Muggle Wump. And the winters, are the winters so very cold over here? It's all snow and ice, said the roly poly bird. Sometimes it's so cold, a bird will wake up in the morning with its feet frozen to the bough that it's been roosting on. Yes, tree house they made and they uh, prepared it as well. Then what should we do? cried Mother Wump. My family will all be deep freezed. No they won't, said the roly poly bird, because when the first leaves start falling from the trees in the autumn, you can all fly home to Africa with me. Don't be ridiculous, Mother Wump said. Monkeys can't fly. You can sit on my back, said the roly poly bird. I shall take you one at a time. You will travel by the roly-poly superjet and it won't cost you a penny. Next chapter. The Twits get the shrinks. And down here in the horrid house, Mr and Mrs Twit are still stuck upside down to the floor of the living room. It's all your fault, yelled Mr Twit, thrashing his legs in the air. You're the one, you ugly old cow who went hopping around, shouting, we're upside down, we're upside down. And you're the one who said to stand on our heads so we'd be the right way up, you whisker, whiskery old warthog, screamed Mrs. Twit. Now we'll never get free. We're stuck here forever. You may be stuck here forever, said Mr. Twit, but not me. I'm going to get away. Mr. Twit wriggled and squirmed and he squiggled and wormed and he twisted and turned and he choggled and churned but the sticky glue held him to the floor just as tightly as it had once held the poor birds in the big dead tree. He was still as upside down as ever, standing on his head. But heads are not made to be stood upon. If you stand on your head for a very long time, a horrid thing happens. And this was where Mr. Twit got his biggest shock of all. With so much weight on it from above, his head began to get squashed into his body. Quite soon, it had disappeared completely sunk out, out of sight in the fatty folds of his flabby neck. And Mrs. Twit was getting the dreaded shrinks too, and this time it wasn't a fake, it was the real thing. Their heads shrank into their necks, 
then their necks began shrinking into their bodies and then their bodies began shrinking into their legs and their legs began shrinking into their feet and one week later on a nice sunny afternoon a man called fred came round to read the gas meter when nobody answered the door fred peeped into the house and there he saw on the floor of the living room two bundles of old clothes two pairs of shoes and a walking stick there was nothing more left in this world of mr and mrs twit and everyone including fred shouted hooray the end oh well i hope you enjoyed it i love it what a great book i think it's brilliant so as i said at the beginning you can vote for our next book and i chose either george's marvelous medicine or the magic finger and these are two uh, Roald Dahl books again. So if you've not read any Roald Dahl books before, he's got lots of them. This was by Roald Dahl. Um, Fantastic Mr. Fox is by Roald Dahl as well, which is probably one of his most famous ones. But these two are also. So remember, you can email year4 at hovingham.org. It's on the website if you forget it. And you can vote for either this one or this one. Let me know and we'll start that one tomorrow. Okay, so I hope you're all well. I hope you're still keeping okay. Remember, you can get in touch if you need anything from us. Um, otherwise, we'll see you back here same time tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Okay, take care, guys. Bye.